Welcome to the Manchester's Liverpool Ultramarathon Race Brief. My name is Wayne Drinkwater and I'm the race director of the GB Ultras. Today we're going to cover some of the key points that you need to know for the event. Okay, race registration and race HQ is at Manchester United Football Club on the car park N2, uh, so just in front of the ground. Uh, parking is at Salford Quays, uh, but there is drop-off parking on N2, okay, but you'll literally be in and out. So on Thursday, prior to the event, from 5.30pm till 9pm, uh, we'll uh, be open for race number uh, collection, bib number collection. Uh, on Good Friday race morning, from 4.15am to 5.45am, there will be bib and race tracker collection, but only race tracker collection on race day morning. Every single runner has got the option of giving GB Ultras a uh, drop bag that will be taken from the start to the finished location of the race. It should be like a medium sized hold all, uh, something maybe a change of footwear and a change of clothes. Uh, register at the race, you get your bib number, collect your tracker and then um, there'll be a designated area for your, uh, for your drop bag. So there is a tear off strip just at the bottom there that you can tear off and uh, that can connect to your bag. So you can just see there, that uh, there's parts which uh, just come out. Just pop it around your bag and fold it in on itself there. And then you've got your race number. So nice and straightforward. Basically it will meet you at the finish line. That's the next time that you'll see it. Okay, there will be a mass start at 6 a.m. Uh, and for the majority of the race, you're going to be following the Trans Pennine Trail. Uh, the Trans Pennine Trail is really well marked and really straightforward, so no map for this event is necessary. Um, having said that, we'll also be marking a route prior to the race day with biodegradable red tape. We'll also have a number of other signs on the route, including arrow, laminated arrow signs at turns, along with race marshals in set key points and other arrow signs as well. Uh, so really well marked routes, really straightforward to follow. Okay, so race number visibility. Your race number should be attached to your front at all times. Um, when you're going through the checkpoints, we really need to see what race number you are. It needs to be identifiable. Uh, so uh, please remember that. Uh, we can stop you during the race, Tash, to put them on your front. Water hazards throughout the route. Guys, be careful, uh, obviously any canals, rivers, uh, water, water courses that we're going to be passing by. Please also remember that sometimes it's quite a narrow trail, so really recommend single file uh, unless you're overtaken. And also just because there's other trail users uh, on the route as well. Um, so uh, please give way where necessary. Okay, so on the support team's front, you're more than welcome to arrange and plan to have your own support team to support your progress during the race itself. If they wanted to follow your progress, then what they can do is they can use the live tracking, uh, which will have sent you the link, and it's also available on our website. Um, basically, they'll be able to follow your progress, put a tick beside uh, your name on the leaderboard, and it will present your position on the map itself, and that will give them a really good insight into where you're up to. Uh, it's really important that your support team does not obstruct other runners and does not obstruct the event team. Bear in mind that at certain checkpoints there is very, very limited parking. So if we had 300 people taking part in the race and 300 cars at every single checkpoint, it's just not going to be viable. Okay, there's going to be some parking issues along the way. And we just want to avoid that. So what we've stipulated on the website is certain dedicated support points where your support team can come and, uh, and meet you along the route. Support runners are not allowed throughout the event. Uh, if you seem to be having a support team, sometimes they might be carrying some of your kit. That's not right. That's not equal um, to other runners. Uh, and also, if you're not having to do the navigation or they're pacing you, then it's an unfair advantage. Okay, and that's not within the race rules. Uh, so I would ideally ask you to uh, make sure that nobody is supporting uh, running beside you, uh, unless they're actually in the race itself. Okay, so the mandatory kit, this is the bare minimum kit that you have to carry for the race. So we're just going to remind uh, runners that basically if you're not carrying all of the necessary kit that you need for the event, then you might be jeopardizing your own safety or the safety of others. So really, uh, we want everybody to be on an equal uh, playing field and therefore the same mandatory kit is required throughout the race itself. Okay, uh, so if you are seen at random kit checks or at the finish line where we do another kit check potentially, would uh, if you're seen uh, to not be carrying the correct kit, 
then time penalties could be imposed. We don't want to disqualify you. Certainly not if you've uh, come so far, um, you know, during the race itself, you've done 40 or 50 miles. We don't want to disqualify you, but time penalties will be imposed if we deem necessary. When it comes to your mantra kits, um, this is the bare minimum kit. So if you feel that you want to carry a, a small first aid kit, if you feel that you want to carry an extra pair of socks, or any uh, special nutrition uh, due to dietary requirements uh, or allergies, would recommend that you carry that with you too. Okay, so please have a look at the mantra kit. Just think of it as the bare minimum kit that you need to carry and uh, anything additional is up to you. Okay, so diversions on the route. So from our side of things, if there are any diversions on the route itself in the lead up to the race, we'll email you and we'll also update the social media channels. Please bear in mind that sometimes these things happen and sometimes they're taken out of our hands and it's required works, essential works that is deemed necessary by the local authority or by the landowner itself. The most current race routes, uh, GPX wise and mapping is actually on the GB Ultras website. On the page, halfway down the page, the map, the download GPX is available there. That is the current, most up-to-date version of the race route. Okay, so at checkpoints, what can you expect food-wise? Okay, there's going to be a range of snacks, fruit, sandwiches, savouries, water, juice, cola, sweets, you name it really. It's going to be a good range to, to choose from. Please remember that if you've got any specific dietary requirements, please bring your own. Okay, uh, equally, if you've got any allergies, any concerns, please make sure that you're asking either the event team at the checkpoint or you again, you bring in your own food. Okay, checkpoint one, six miles in, Charlton Water Park. Checkpoint two, at 15 miles in, Dunham Massey. Checkpoint three, 22 miles in, Latchford Locks. Checkpoint four, at 32 miles, Spike Island. Checkpoint five, 38 miles, Speak. And checkpoint six, at 44 miles, is broad green uh, the finish is located at north end sports and social club um, and there is adequate uh, parking there if you need to please ensure that any litter is nice and tight packed away in your pouch in your race vest during the event sometimes people uh, accidentally drop litter along the way so please make sure that you you're not one of those okay um, all the events are coupless so if you want to drink other than your bottle at checkpoints if you want to drink please remember to bring your own cup or it's also available on the GB Ultra shop uh, the cutoff for the events is 14 hours it's a strict cutoff uh, road crossings Please be mindful and careful when uh, when crossing roads throughout the events. If there is a, a pedestrian crossing or anything like that, please do um, please do uh, use it. Okay. Choice of footwear for the event. It's largely it's uh, it's a flat uh, trail event, uh, but it's a large proportion of the route is uh, is tarmac or uh, compact trail. So we would really recommend road trainers for this particular event. Uh, next up is, and most importantly, is race uh, emergency instructions. If there is a minor injury, please let the checkpoint, a race marshal, or race HQ know. Only in an emergency, please follow the following instructions. That's a risk to life and limb. Number one, use your foil, emergency blanket, and any spare clothing that you've got. Number two, trigger the SOS button on your tracker. So just on your tracker here, just the race uh, race tracker logo there, just underneath it. Gently press it, approximately three to five seconds, and it will uh, race HQ, and will then dispatch the medical team. Uh, that is no substitute for dialing nine nine nine. So step three is dial nine 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 and ask for an ambulance. Step four, when possible, call race HQ. Okay, the SOS button might be damaged during a fall or anything like that. So when possible, call race HQ. Number five, attract the attention of fellow runners shouting or using your whistle. That concludes the race brief for the Manchester to Liverpool Ultramarathon. Thanks so much for your time. If you've got any questions, please feel free to email us on info at gbultras.com and myself or the team will come back to you as soon as we can. Um, other than that, have a great race. Thanks for all the support and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there.